The Entity B founders, Pranav Roy and Radhika Roy, last night put out a statement saying that they have decided to divest most of their sales in NDTV to the AMG Media Network owned by Gautam Adani, the richest Indian and among the five richest men in the world. Royce did not specify in that statement as to exactly how much of their sales they are willing to sell to Adani's. But a stock exchange filing yesterday said that Royce have decided to dispose of almost 27 out of the 32 percent sales they currently hold in NDTV. That would leave the founders of NDTV with a nominal 5 percent stake in the company they have steered with great pride for over three decades. But then this move is not very surprising. Ever since Gautam Adani acquired 100% stake in RRPR holding, which controlled a little over 29% stake in NDTV. It was a foregone conclusion that the ownership of NDTV would pass into the hands of the most successful and the most powerful businessman of our country, sooner than later. As per expectations and as required by statutory regulations, Kotamadani made an open offer to buy 26% stake in the NDTV channel, but he managed to get only a little over. 8% sales. Probably because the price he offered was much lower than the price at which the NDTV stock was being traded on the stock exchange that time. Nevertheless, with that 30% in his kitty, remember 29% he got from RRPR holding and 8% he got from the open offer. So together that made 37%. So with that 37%, Gautam Adani became the single largest shareholder in NDTV with the original promoter, Roy's, holding a little over 32%. But even after Adani's had acquired 37% compared to Roy's 32%, the management control was still with the Roy's all these days because a special resolution with a two-third majority of shareholder nod was necessary for the management to change hands officially. But the writing was clearly on the wall. Pranoy Roy could not have matched the purse strings of a Gautam Adani to buy for another 20% stake in the open market to keep control of the NDTV. Yes, he could have waged a defined battle to delay the eventual takeover by Adani's, but he would not have possibly succeeded in deferring it beyond a point given the enormous clout the Adani Empire enjoys with the current government and given the fact that the Royals themselves have been at the receiving end. They have had several brosses with the current political and regulatory dispensation in the last so many years. Yes, Royals could have held on as long as possible, but that would have led to a, an ugly corporate bloodbath. 
Rains had perhaps no stomach for it. They felt destruction was better part of the valor. They chose to meekly retire with an estimated 600 or crore rupees in their pocket. That explains their statement last night. But what is truly intriguing is their express faith that, quote, Mr. Adani will preserve the values of trust, credibility and independence. The values they say that NDTV cherished and cultivated. They go on to say that they hope that Adani's will not only preserve those values, but expand upon them with all the responsibility required of a leader of an organization of this nature and this stature. Isn't that high hope from a leading corporate entity taking control of an established media house? What is intriguing that Roy's have expressed such hope even after Dotam Adani had gone on record to say that the major responsibility of the media is to highlight what the government is doing right. Even as it may sometimes pinpoint minor mistakes, if any, the government may commit once in a while. This is an understanding of the media any government would love to hear from the owners of the media houses. But unfortunately, this is an understanding of media that puts the original idea of media on its head. Thomas Jefferson, the legendary defender of free press, had told the American Constituent Assembly that the US could do possibly without an opposition party, but not without a free press that must continuously put the spotlight on the wrongs, on the injustices perpetrated by the government of the day. What was his emphasis? That the relationship of the media vis-a-vis -vis the powers that be must necessarily be adversarial. The government, he said, has a large machinery, will have much larger machinery than all the media houses put together to promote itself and to blow its own trumpet. The media will do genuine public service if it uses its limited resources to bring to light the miseries of the people. The miseries inflicted by both the state and the non-state actors. In a Jeffersonian framework, the media ought to be 100% adversarial. In the NDTV 24-7, controlled by Roy's, the ratio of adversarial to promotional was my oil guess, 40 to 60, that is 40% adversarial and 60% promotional. The largest speculation today is whether under Adani's the NDTV 24-7 will be 100% promotional or will the new owners leave the scope for 5 to 10% adversarial content. Your guess is as good as mine. Thank you.